Ever pondered the secret sauce behind successful startups? There's more than one ingredient, but here's a major one, achieving a monopoly. Despite the negative connotations, monopolies can drive innovation. Why? Because to dominate a market, you must introduce something groundbreaking and inimitable. It's all about transitioning from zero to one. This idea is central to Peter Thiel's beliefs. Recognized as a top-tier venture capitalist, Thiel co-founded PayPal and was Facebook's first outside investor. Today, we'll dive into the essence of his book, Zero to One, inspired by a course he taught at Stanford University. In the first half of the video, we'll uncover three practices to avoid. Subsequently, the latter part will guide you on how to stand out as a monopolist. But before all that, let's embark on a journey to a place every innovator should venture, the future. Before we begin, if you'd like a copy of Peter Thiel's book, Zero to One, please see the description below. If you use the link provided, you'll not only deepen your knowledge on venture capital, but also help my channel to continue making videos like this one. With that said, let's dive in. Lesson 1. Stop imitating and start thinking outside established conventions. Imagine the world in 2100. What do you see? Chances are, your envisioned future differs from today signifying progress. We all understand this, having seen technological advancements since our childhood. So, considering 2100, perhaps you picture advanced planes, sleek self-driving cars, or ultra-thin computer monitors. This reflects horizontal progress, which builds upon current ideas and products. Globalization spreads these innovations further. Yet, true innovation isn't just about enhancing the existing, it's about vertical progress, creating entirely new technologies. Consider smartphones. Their invention exemplified vertical progress, transitioning from a world without to one with them. Their distribution to new markets represented horizontal progress. This ties into Thiel's zero to one concept. On a coordinate system, the x-axis denotes horizontal progress, going from one to n, while the y-axis symbolizes vertical progress, going from zero to one. Lesson two. Stop relying on good luck. Success is the product of focus and determination. Achieving vertical progress is challenging since it requires envisioning something novel that meets a future demand. As a startup founder, predicting the future entails critically analyzing the present. Thiel emphasizes this insight so much that he asks interviewees, what important truth do few agree with you on? This identifies thinkers who can reshape the future. After analyzing potential futures, the key is focus. While many prepare for numerous outcomes, it's often futile due to the vast uncertainties of the future. Instead, targeting the optimal future for you is wiser. For instance, students often juggle multiple activities to impress top universities, but mastering a single subject might be more advantageous. For startups, focusing on their single, best future is vital. Success requires discerning decisions, identifying the unique niche, crafting the game-changing product, and seizing that perfect moment to launch. Lesson three, stop making products that can be copied and create a monopoly instead. While many argue that competition drives economic progress, it's monopolies that truly spur innovation. Monopoly often evokes images of dominant firms suppressing rivals. But monopolies can also indicate excellence, offering something unmatched that competitors can't replicate. Consider Google's unrivaled dominance in search engines. Although it may seem unfair to potential competitors, Google's ascension benefited countless users. Monopolies don't stifle long-term competition. They challenge newcomers to produce not just imitations, but superior alternatives, ultimately benefiting consumers. Monopolies also shield industries from detrimental overcompetition. In 2012, intense airline competition yielded only 37 cents profit per trip, a stark contrast to Google's sizable profit margins. Monopolies offer societal and corporate advantages. One, technological superiority. Their technology significantly outpaces rivals. Google's algorithms, for instance, far exceed competitors in speed and precision. Two, network effects. Their value increases with user numbers. Facebook's utility, for example, hinges on its widespread adoption. Three, economies of scale. Production at large scales leads to cost savings. A bakery's fixed costs, such as rent, get distributed over more products, reducing the cost per item. Four, 
Robust branding. Brands like Apple are inimitable, giving them a unique market position. To gauge a company's potential monopoly status, evaluate these criteria. Technological edge, network effects, economies of scale, and brand strength. Lesson 4. You need a vision. What truly defines a startup founder? Beyond the common traits of passion and adventure, successful founders often possess a unique quirk. Take PayPal's team, for instance. Many were distinctly unconventional, with some even building bombs as teens. Originality is paramount in a founding team, as founders don't just initiate a business, they shape its vision. And authentic vision can't be extracted from a manual. It's birthed from distinct personalities with unique insights. Reflect on Apple's journey. Born in the 1970s as a playful innovator, Apple's growth led to an influx of managers, eventually sidelining visionary founder Steve Jobs. The company remained operational, but soulless. Upon Jobs' return in 1997, facing near bankruptcy, his groundbreaking vision paved the way for iconic products like the iPod, iPhone, and iPad. By 2010, under Jobs' strategic vision, Apple emerged as the world's most valuable entity. This trajectory underscores the invaluable role of a founder's originality and vision, even for established companies. Lesson 5. You need a secret. In today's tech-saturated world, it might seem challenging to find avenues for vertical progress. The landscape seems saturated with innovations, leading many to believe there's no room for novel ideas. Yet, countless undiscovered secrets remain. Such secrets, often overlooked or deemed uninteresting by many, might be challenging to uncover due to skepticism. But when tech companies harness superior technology, they can solidify their leadership in the market. The alternative? Becoming a mere contributor to horizontal progress in an already crowded arena. Consider Hewlett Packard in the 1990s, continuously rolling out inventive products like affordable color printers and multifunctional machines. However, Internal conflicts in the late 90s between tech forward Tom Perkins and chairwoman Patricia Dunn halted their innovative momentum. Choosing to sideline technology and innovation in the 2000s, HP saw a 50% dip in its market value. Lesson 6. You need persistence. PayPal, co-founded in 1998 by Max Levchin, Luke Nasek, and Peter Thiel, wasn't instantly profitable. In 2001, Teal realized most of its value was tied to future, yet-to-be-realized profits. This showcases that startups might not see immediate profits, but their potential future profits determine their value. For startup founders, immediate dominance isn't the norm. Long-term commitment is essential. Starting small and expanding gradually is often the wisest approach. It's not about excelling in every domain, but in your specific niche. Define your market precisely. Dominate it, then expand. Amazon is a prime example. Jeff Bezos' vision was to be the top online retailer, yet he began solely with books. As Amazon dominated that niche, it branched out, debunking the myth of its overnight success. Lesson 7. You need a strong culture. In the initial days of building a business, establishing a solid culture is vital, as seen with PayPal, where team cohesion led to further collaborations. Given the significance of each member in a startup, it's essential to assess not only their skills, but their interpersonal connections. Peter Thiel learned from an earlier investment with Luke Nasek the perils of weak personal ties. Ensuring alignment among stakeholders is key, especially as founders often focus on product development while boards prioritize quick profits. Potential conflicts should be addressed early. But fostering a robust culture extends beyond top leadership. While perks can be enticing, true company culture revolves around building and maintaining strong relationships, requiring time and dedication. Lesson 8. You need an outstanding sales strategy. For tech-focused founders, sales can sometimes take a backseat to innovation, but it shouldn't. Effectively selling your product requires a strong distribution strategy tailored to the potential value of each client. For instance, in high-ticket businesses like Palantir, where sales rake in millions, CEOs often take a direct role in sales. However, in enterprises with smaller deal sizes, a dedicated sales team is more appropriate. Sales aren't about manipulative tactics, but building genuine client relationships and determining the best way to reach customers. 
Different products demand different sales strategies, from viral marketing to conventional advertising. Before committing resources, test various strategies on a smaller scale and expand successful approaches. Lesson 9. Before you start, answer these questions. During the clean tech boom between 2005 and 2009, Silicon Valley saw an influx of over $500 billion in investments. Despite the initial enthusiasm, many companies folded, mainly due to poor market analysis. Here are some reasons. 1. Clean tech startups failed to realize that outperforming existing energy giants required technology that was exponentially superior. 2. Many misjudged the pace of advancements in clean technology, expecting rapid progress when the reality was slow and steady growth. 3. These companies jumped into a cutthroat trillion-dollar energy industry without securing their niche or creating a unique monopoly. 4. Often, clean tech companies were led by non-technical leaders lacking product development expertise. 5. Startups like Better Place assumed their technology didn't need robust distribution. However, after spending huge amounts of investment and low sales figures, they faced bankruptcy. 6. Some were caught off guard by Chinese competitors offering similar products at reduced prices, an oversight they could have avoided. For future entrepreneurs, avoiding these pitfalls is essential. Here's a list of questions you need to ask before starting. 1. Engineering. Can you offer a genuine technological innovation? 2. Timing. Is it the right moment to launch your venture? 3. Monopoly. Can you initially dominate a niche market? 4. Team. Is your team equipped to tackle this venture? 5. Distribution. Do you have a strategy to reach your customers? 6. Durability. Can you maintain your market position in the long run? 7. Secret. Have you identified a unique, overlooked opportunity? In conclusion, Peter Thiel suggests that to thrive as an entrepreneur, you should aim to carve a monopoly. Start with a unique vision, ensuring your business stands out and isn't just another echo. Begin in a niche, delivering unparalleled value. Once you've gained dominance, broaden your horizons. However, success demands audacity. Dare to defy norms, for true success isn't for imitators. If you've enjoyed the video today, be sure to like and subscribe. If you'd like to learn more, click on the suggested video on the screen. Until next time, keep calm and compound on.